Hey guys, John V from Phone Reading here. Right now you're watching our video review of the Samsung Galaxy Tab S 8.4. In the compact tablet segment, things like the iPad mini with retina display really stands out and continues to be one of the more dominant forces in the space. But Samsung has a really nice thing going on with the Galaxy Tab S 8.4 now that it's bringing back the Super AMOLED display. It clearly adopts many of the Galaxy S5's design characteristics. So it's still a plastic body, you have a dimple pattern in the rear, and it's also laid out in the portrait style orientation. On one hand, we appreciate that the plastic housing gives it a thin and lightweight construction, so it's very easy to hold in the hand, but at the same time, it's lacking that premium quality. Despite that, it's still relatively decent with its construction, and we're able to grasp it with one hand comfortably. The start of the show here is the screen. It's gorgeous, vivid, crisp, and boy does it impress in many ways. We haven't seen a Super AMOLED display on a tablet in quite a long time, so it's very refreshing to find it here again. It features an 8.4 inch 1600 by 2560 Super AMOLED display, giving it a pixel density count of 359 pixels per inch. Not surprisingly, it's super sharp, detailed, and crisp. So for things like surfing the web, you're gonna really enjoy it just because there's a good amount of clarity with the display. Typical of the technology, it's Super AMOLED display has a noticeably oversaturated color reproduction. It's not bad considering that it's an attention grabber and it's also super vibrant, but as an alternative, they have different display modes. The adaptive one will optimize the display depending on the lighting conditions and even application that you're running. There's also a basic mode which actually produces more natural, realistic looking colors. In apps like Paper Garden, the adaptive display mode adjusts the contrast to color saturation to give us the most ideal viewing experience. Just like the Galaxy S5, it features a fingerprint sensor. It works in the same premise. It's integrated into the home button. It does take a little bit of few swipes for it to register properly though. Take a look around its metal trim bezel. It features all the same ports and buttons we're familiar with. So they include the power button, the volume control, an IR blaster, micro SD card slot. You have the micro USB 2.0 port, three and a half millimeter headset jack, two speakers, and a microphone. And lastly, there's an eight megapixel autofocus camera with an LED flash in the rear, as well as two dimples, which are used to snap on various accessories to the tablet. So let's change the focus and talk about the software. It's running TouchWiz on top of Android 4.4.2 KitKat, so nothing surprisingly new. In terms of the visuals, I'm just gonna say it's short here. It's rather bland and kind of lacking in terms of the uh, more stylish appeal of other rival UIs. But the nice thing is that they've kind of toned down the feature set, so you're not gonna be bombarded by too many redundant stuff that we find on previous TouchWiz efforts. However, they kept some of the more important features. For example, you have multi-window for true multitasking. You just swipe from the right side at any time. And from here, we're able to actually have that true multitasking experience just because we could have two apps running side by side to one another. One really cool new feature with the tablet is SideSync 3.0. So if you have a Galaxy S5, basically when you run the apps together, you're gonna to be able to have an emulator of the phone on your tablet. So you have access to everything. You can make phone calls, you can receive text messages, run third-party applications. Now, not all the applications will work. For example, if I try to run the camera, it's not gonna launch. But if I try playing a game of some sort, we'll be able to do that. The performance is decent, but every now and then, uh, we do notice some slowdown and sluggishness with it, which is of course typical because of the real-time interaction. Another really useful feature is that the tablet has support for multiple users. So it's especially great for home. If you have kids, you could have different user profiles for each one. They have access to their own settings and apps, so you don't have to worry about your kids messing around with your home screen. I briefly touched up on it earlier, but the other new feature here is the Paper Garden application. It's a new magazine service hub, and it works in conjunction with the super sharp display and the adaptive mode setting. So basically, it's gonna optimize the experience so you get finer, crisper looking text, and of course, the display is gonna adapt to give us the most optimal viewing experience. 
So that sums up the experience here with the Galaxy Tab S 8.4. TouchWiz, of course, needs an overhaul in terms of the visual presentation, but it's nice to see that they focus the feature set on select few rather than inundating us with a whole lot of redundant ones. You know, you're not gonna have too much of a problem running most of today's 3D games. Every now and then, we still notice some performance hitches with the uh, tablet. It's powered by a 1.9 gigahertz Exynos 5 Octa 5420 processor coupled with three gigabytes of RAM. We do notice sluggishness whenever we do more processor intensive stuff like using the multi-window feature and even the side sync 3.0. Its performance might be tested by processor intensive stuff, but for basic things like surfing the web, it handles with ease. You have a good amount of finesse with navigational controls, and with our Wi-Fi model, it's able to load up complex web pages very quickly. Being TouchWiz and all, there's nothing new with the music player. It's the same old one we're familiar with. It's able to produce a fair amount of volume with its two speakers and has a very commanding presence. The tablet really shines brightly when it comes to watching high definition videos. It's just able to play it smoothly, no performance hitches, but the Super AMOLED display really comes to life as it displays some vibrant color tones. And when you throw in the adaptive mode display, it adjusts the color saturation, the contrast to really give us the most uplifting experience. For a tablet, it takes some decent looking photos with its 8 megapixel autofocus camera, just as long as you have a lot of lighting present. If not, under lower lighting situations, you tend to see more noise and graininess. At the same time, it produces favorable results with its 1080p video recording quality, sharp looking details, it records smoothly, clear audio recording, and its continuous autofocus feature is pretty quick on the fly. With its 4900 milliamp hour battery, it's able to provide us easily solid one day of normal usage. There's something good brewing here with the Galaxy Tab S 8.4. When it comes to compact tablets, this is one that we definitely recommend. With a $400 price point for the base Wi-Fi model, it's pretty much on the same pace as the iPad mini with the Retina display. Therefore, if you're in the market for a compact size tablet, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S 8.4 has a lot good going for it. You have some really up-to-date hardware, you have a pretty thin and light construction, and on top of that, that gorgeous Super AMOLED display continues to be one polarizing thing. So if you guys want to learn more about the Samsung Galaxy Tab S 8.4, you can check out our website, phonereno.com. John V. Thanks for watching.